Hi, I'm Peter Kelmstrom of Kelmstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will talk about our custom forms development offerings. We have been working with SharePoint for the best, better part of 20 years actually now, and we've done all everything really there is to do with SharePoint. So I'm going to show you some examples of that and how beneficial that can be. And there are, of course, lots of ways to modify SharePoint forms. These are development projects. These are not out of the box. This is not uh, something that you do yourself. But this is something that you hire a developer to do. And we can be that developer, of course. And that's what I want to show you what that allows you to do if you take that route. So first of all, we can, of course, build mobile friendly apps. Here is an app that I'm going to show you, the flight log. The flight log is a regular SharePoint list. And that's how we build most of our applications. As you see, there's one list here for each plane. It's the red plane, the white plane, and there is a green plane also somewhere. There's the green plane. And as you see, it has no items in them now, but those are the flight logs for those. If I go into the settings of those, you see that there's a bunch of columns here. In the view already, in the settings, you can see it even more clearly. There's a lot of them. Now, the UI for this, of course, if you just you know run regular SharePoint, it would be a long, long list of columns but they want this filled out in a very particular way. So when you click on a new item here, you come to a very mobile friendly form. And that's exactly what the pilots are doing. They have an iPad or an iPhone with them on the plane. And they of course wanna tap this in as quickly as possible because they're sitting there in the plane, time is money. So uh, there's user-friendly ways to set dates. And as you see, this looks nothing like a SharePoint form, but in fact, it is a, a regular SharePoint form with a lot of JavaScript and CSS on top of it. They can copy if they're doing the same crew again, they can make a copy. If they've done the pre-flight check, they, they do that kind of thing. And they have a countdown for how much time remains until they need to do a more thorough 24 hour pre-flight check stuff like that. They can indicate whether this was a night flight, all these kind of things. But as you see, what I mainly want to show you here is the UI of this. One other thing that I want to show you is, is that if I take this out, you'll see that this is actually responsive. That's something that SharePoint isn't by default. So if they're actually using this on an iPad, then they can use the full width of the iPad. But if they're using it on the iPhone, it narrows down to that kind of UI. So that's what I wanted to show you for this application. And another thing that I want to show you is uh, client-side business rules. Of course, there can be a lot of different things here, but most of these kind of client-side business rules is if you fill in this, then that other thing should change. So a classic example is the progress bar. How much have you done of the work? So if you've done 95%, then of course the status is in progress. If, you're, you know, if the progress is zero, then you haven't started. If you want those two things to stick together, then I have a UI for that. That is here. So this is one of my products. And so of course, a lot of work has been done in that. In the background here, there's a regular SharePoint list. Everything is stored in SharePoint. Uh, of course, the version history and all that stuff is there. But when I go into the uh, actual um, application, the Kanban Task Manager, I have a lot of extra functionality. For example, we have drag and drop there, and everything is, of course, saved back to SharePoint. And I wanted to show you now the client-side rules there. If I drag here, you'll see that this uh, is uh, sticking to, uh, together. The percentage here is now 45%. If I drag it down, it says and not started. If I drag it all the way up to 100%, it says completed. So there we have the connection between two different columns because of course these these two columns in a SharePoint itself are connected to each other. We'll get back to this form because uh, there are a lot of functionality in here, but I just wanted to show you that the uh, client side business logic that's an example of that or business rules. Master details is another one that I want to show you there because of course there's a lot of cases like an invoice that has invoice rows or a task that has checklist items and that's a good example. And SharePoint doesn't really have that, and there are lots of ways to build that. But I want to show you what I've done here with uh, the checklist in this. So first of all, of course, you can check these things. And again, you see they have the connection again here to the progress. So if I check all of these things here, 
I get a counter there, and if I do hundred of hundred uh, percent of them, six out of six, then it's uh, these two are completed. Also, I can of course also add new items here. So I can do uh, one for marketing. Just press enter there, and it gets added to the end. There you go, the marketing. And um, now you see it's not and now it's not completed anymore. I can also drag and drop these things to have them in the correct order. So that's the demonstration of the master details. So we have one task with lots of checkboxes, and that's how you can accommodate that by just pressing enter or pressing the plus there to the right. Uh, search is of course very important in SharePoint, and um, search in SharePoint works very well if you configure it right, and that means that you have to build things in the right way. If you just keep adding columns to a list, it does not work well. You have to create side columns, and you might want to create side columns in a content type hub. So this, the SharePoint search engine is brilliant, but the UI for it mm, leaves a lot to wish for, really. So here's another example where I'm using the Kanban task manager for the search. So, so let's uh, do that. Of course, this contains a lot of structured information. So I can do just a free text search by typing in there if I want to do search as there was something with a meeting. I just type in up here and press enter. And there you see now it's filtering on those items, the 21 of these that uh, have the word meeting somewhere in them. Uh, but I don't want to see the normal. I, I don't want to see the low. I just want to see the high ones. And there you see now it's just four of those. So that's a way to do search. And as you see, this is uh, lightning fast because it's all being done on the client side. You can, of course, use the search engine in the background also because, again, the search engine is really fast if you just know how to send the correct parameters to it. So building for search, making it uh, right from the start, and also building a UI on top of the SharePoint search is something that we do and that can be really powerful. Automated uh, content creation is also something that we do. It's not so much forms, of course, but I'm going to show you some techniques here. Because when you create lists and content types in SharePoint, it's very important to do them in the right way. For example, you do want to specify the internal name. For that, we have another tool here. That's a, a freeware tool that we have on the website. I'm just going to add some example data here, and you'll see what this does, it creates a content type called invoice management, which has all of these columns. And I can specify which of these should be visible on the new edit and display forms. A lot of settings here. And also I specify the internal name. And what all of this does, and this is a very nice user-friendly Excel-like UI, it creates PowerShell script how to set that up. So this is uh, brilliant for when you want to test in one environment and deploy in another, which is rather tricky to do. A lot of SharePoint development is being done right in the production environment. So having the right tool for creating your content and the, or, or your information and architecture is very important. And this is a good tool for that, in my opinion. And of course, this also allows you to copy and paste uh, and do stuff like that. So this is an example of a grid UI. This is not SharePoint, actually but it, uh, it's SharePoint related, of course, so it's not hosted inside SharePoint. Well, I'll show you other instances where I'm using this kind of grid control inside SharePoint. But let's move on and talk more about these things. We've talked about automating content creation, copy and paste, we mentioned that also. That is something that business users use a lot. They get information in different formats, usually in Excel. So being able to copy and paste from Excel or to Excel is really, really powerful. And that's something that SharePoint sometimes does rather well. But having a grid UI on top of it that makes that easier is really powerful. Tabs is another important feature that SharePoint is mostly lacking. If you create a list with lots of columns, having tabs to summarize the information is really, really powerful. So let me show you an example of tabs. Here is a solution that I built for a customer. Contract information. If I go into site contents here, you see that there are three lists, the contract information, the contract location, item pricing, and the contract volumes. And these lists have a lot of information in each of them, and they're also connected. So to work with this information, you go to the top level, the contract information, and there you find one of the contracts. 
Let's just go into the ethanol one here. And there you see the different tabs up here, the main contract info, the main contract details. And as you see, it's uh, fast and there's no page reload or anything. So it really works well. And also here under the third tab here, I can see that the related volumes. Also, I can change this information in the grid here. And when I do, the color changes and I can save it back. So that this is actually working with, now I'm seeing the main contract information item and I'm showing three sub items. So this is a, an example of master detail also, of course. Role-based security is not something that SharePoint really doesn't have. So specifying what role a person have, in this case, you're adding a student to a study manager product that we have, is very powerful. But let me show you what that does. Here, I make study groups and where each study groups becomes a SharePoint subsite here. And when I add a new student here, I select which subsite is it that I want to work with, which is in this case called a study group, and then I add a person to that. And of course, that implies that this person that I'm adding now should have read permissions on the main site and he should have edit permissions on the subsite. And there are some other details there also in terms of uh, submitting your own personal documents and stuff like that. But uh, managing and setting up the business rules for security is really powerful. So that's something that can be done. Another form of security is the column level security. And that's another feature that SharePoint really doesn't have. It doesn't allow you to specify these users should see, should see that column when they're logged in and so on. So uh, to solve that, I'm back to the um, uh, solution with the flight logs. So here's a list of the staff that is who can work with this flight log, these flight log lists. And here you can specify the who, the, the person name and the employee that connects back to, of course, the SharePoint item, and then what that person should be able to do. Should he be able to do a certifying staff check? Should he be able to, be able to do the 24-hour uh, uh, pre-flight check and stuff like that? Is he able to make corrections? Those kind of things. So that is, of course, read from the SharePoint form that we showed uh, earlier. And so that's one way to do uh, column level security. Another cool thing that SharePoint has a little bit of is geolocation. It actually only has a column with geolocation that uses Bing in a rather boring way. So Google is better at those things, in my opinion, and uh, my customers feel that way also. So let me show you a way to handle that. Uh, what I've done here is simply added a geo column to SharePoint, which actually has to be done by PowerShell. And then I've added a UI to allow the user to pick a and search from Google Maps. And when you enter that, it gets added back into the uh, SharePoint item. So let's uh, switch over here to here's this application. There you go. This is the pipeline, a plot where there, there's a pipeline. And now to find a location, I can search. And as you see, I get uh, IntelliSense there. So if I search for Borholm, which is where our main office is in Sweden. You see, I can uh, get that and I can zoom in here. I can show that the plot is actually right there, right by the beach. All right, and that's it. You just click where, where you want that uh, marker to go and that gets saved when you save the item. So that's uh, how easy that is. So improving the geolocation and using that is something that we have done and can do, of course, also. Another uh, example that I want to show you is also mobile friendly, of course, but that is changing the way that people interact with SharePoint. And usually when you fill out a form, that's the concept. You fill out a form, but a shopping cart is something that users are really used to. They, they do that all the time uh, on, on the web, right? On Amazon or something. So using that same kind of UI in a mobile friendly way, it, it's really powerful. In this example, there's a construction company. Here is the project site for one such a construction project. And as you see, here is my shopping cart. Let's open that in a new window. And as you see again here, this becomes very mobile friendly, responsive, up to a point, of course. It fits well on a mobile phone, of course. 
Uh, and when you go into these categories, you want to have some consumables and here's some stuff. Uh, so some of that. So I just press how many you want. Maybe make a comment here, uh, the good stuff or something like that. And then you add that to the card. And as you see that uh, that is updated now, then you can add more stuff here, of course. And then when you're done, of course, what the user expects you to do, either go, you go back to the main categories the cart is filled with two items there and then you uh, go to the cart and you see the preview of what you've ordered you select the crew this is to be delivered to add comments and then you check out and of course what happens here is that this places an order you're back to the categories and you can fill that out so of course the users on the, on the field that are working in a construction site they have this bookmarked in their phone because they're working on project one here. So they have that bookmarked in, in their phone and just go in and order new stuff. And in the background, of course, this is submitting an item in a SharePoint list. So these are the orders. Here you see exactly who did it, what they did, and so on and so on. Then they can work on that in the back end and uh, send it uh, to a supplier or you know order all the stuff that needs to be done. But that's the automation that they wanted, the UI for the construction workers to, in terms of a shopping cart. So that's the shopping cart example. Drag and drop editing. And let me show you a couple of examples of that. Back to the Kanban task manager here. Yeah, let's close down the filter. And here we have, of course, drag and drop. Drag and drop is a very powerful thing. People are really used to that, and I have several different versions of that. You can drag and drop between different timelines here. You can say that this should be assigned to the, the other person. You can uh, select uh, the timeline based on project, directions, so on. Um, we also have a seven habits view. If you've read the book called uh, Seven Habits of Highly Efficient People, this is the view described in that book. That's drag and drop, a couple of different variants of that. That was the end. Let me just show you some more pages that I have up here. Uh, we've shown you that. This is a study manager. I just want to show you some of these exercises here. Uh, when I go into the seniors uh, subsite, this is the study manager again, I can see uh, that I've done zero out of the 18 available uh, classes that I'm supposed to do. Uh, let's go into some of these here that I already opened some of these exercises. So this is a text that I'm supposed to read, and then I can drag and drop these things depending on what the right answer is. So that's kind of like Microsoft Forms, but um, you don't have to go to another application and it's totally integrated. So that's another drag and drop ex example there. Here's another one, connect the different parts like that, build sentences like that. And if you click next, then if you're not done, you get that kind of user-friendly kind of thing. So that's another type of UI that we've built with JavaScript, of course. And of course you have type also, is cold here. If you are not afraid, or are they, and so on. And you can see how many you've done, and there you go. And of course now you get a feedback that um, you did zero mistakes and you spent 15 seconds on this one. All right. And of course, that is tracked. You get uh, the points for, for how much uh, progress you've made, stuff like that. There's another one. You click on some things. Just click on the plural forms, rather easy. This is a rather cool one for language studies where you have a UI with multimedia in it. As you see, it's reading the text here and showing exactly where the text is. And I have an editor for that also. So, so that's another option that's there. And basically, when you're doing this kind of development, you can use any HTML web-based technology inside SharePoint. So that's rather cool. It's another rather simple type of exercise. In conclusion, we're happy to build any form of UI, business rules, or uh, forms on top of SharePoint. And these are some examples of what we've done in the past. Thank you for watching this demonstration.